Welcome back to XR Engineer Training. This is part 14, Data Collection Tasks by Task Only. In this video, we'll review how to use two techniques that are useful with data collection tasks and playbooks, specifically using context within data collection tasks and questions that are based on XOR fields. And with that, let's get to it. In video number nine of this series, we added a data collection task that sends an email to the user asking them whether or not they interacted with a suspicious URL and then use their answer to determine whether or not to reset their password or not. Data collection tasks are great for this, reaching out to our users to gather additional data and taking action based on their response. But we can also use them to collect information from our analysts as part of their response to the incident and drive the playbook forward based on their answers. For example, what if there were several domains or URLs as part of an incident that our analysts were investigating, such as the example incident on screen here? It has a number of URLs and domains that have been extracted, and we'd like to make it easy for our analysts to quickly block these as part of the playbook if they so choose. But we can accomplish, accomplish this using a data collection task, which will utilize the data within context to prompt the analysts for which domains or URLs they would like to block. Let's quickly build a playbook that will accomplish this task. We'll start by adding our data collection task, adding in the task and selecting data collection and giving it the name. Do you want to block a domain? Now for this data collection task, we're going to actually have this run by task only. To do that, we need to uncheck the available communication channels. This means that the task will prompt the analyst as part of the playbook instead of sending an email. However, do know that the techniques we're describing here can also be used by those email data collection tasks if you wish. In this case, we'll give it a message which is the same as the task, and we'll move on to adding our question. Next, we'll add our question. In this case, the question is select the domains that you want to block. In this case, we'll change our answer type as the way to present items from context is to either use a single select or the multi-select slash array option. In this case, we aren't interested in hard coding the answers as we want them to be able to select the domains from the incident that this task presents from. As you can see, we have the option to access context from within the data collection task. I'm gonna delete the second option. We're gonna click the blue curly braces and select filters and transformers. And in this case, we want to grab the domain.name from our sample incident. We can test that and verify by selecting test, picking from incident 618. We can see that the domains are stored under the domain key and context, and each one is under the name key. We can hit test. We can see that we get four domains back. These will be the four domains that our analysts will be prompted as part of our data collection task. And hit done testing and OK, and we can see that the answers for this will then be pulled from context. We can test our playbook again using our debugger, open the debugger panel and use incident 618 as it has our mock data. If we give this a run, we can see that the data collection task will now prompt us with the domains from context, allowing the analysts to select the domains that they wish to block as part of the playbook. Those answers are then stored into context itself, and we can use these as part of the next task in the playbook to tag them for blocking to an external dynamic list. We can quickly add in the task that will use our answers. In this case, we'll be using our append indicator field automation, which allows us to tag the domain indicators from XOR's database, and then those domains are picked up by our export generic indicator service that hosts an external dynamic list that our firewalls will pick up to block. In this case, the field is tags, and we previously used the tag approve block to block indicator or tag indicators for blocking. The indicator values we can use by selecting the answers from our data collection task. This will pass in the array of answers that our analysts select, and then there will be tag for blocking. Naturally, you may want to do some error checking, throwing a conditional in front just to make sure the analyst actually did select something, but we'll leave, you for, leave that to you for homework. Next, we can also use data collection questions based on XOR fields. And this has the added benefit of setting the field value as part of it when it's done. 
For example, let's add two more questions to our task based on the close notes and the close reason fields. To do this, we'll scroll down on our data collection task and we'll add a question based on a field. This prompts us for the field that we want to base our question on. In this case, we'll start with the close reason, which is a single select type field. Give this a question, we'll call it close reason. And the answers that will be associated are based on the values of the close reason, reason field. So false positive, resolved, etc. You can repeat this one more time, adding one more question based on a field. In this case, we can add the close notes field. And add close notes. And then we can make both of these mandatory to prompt our analyst to complete both when they complete the data collection task and select the domains to block. We can hit OK, and we can hit Save, and we can run our playbook. In this case, it asks us for the domains we would like to block, as well as the reason. It's fun. If we submit our answers, we can take a look in context and see what happened to our closed reason and closed notes field. If we search for closed reason, we can see that it has been set to resolved. And if we search for closed notes, we can see that that field has also been set to training is fun allowing us to capture those answers and set those fields based on our analyst responses directly from the data collection task. We can test our playbook on our sample incident, rerunning the playbook, and be prompted with our data collection task. Again, we can pick our domains that we would like to block, set our reason, and some close notes, and hit submit. If everything goes well, we can pivot over to our incident info. We can see that the close reason and close notes have been already set for our analyst. This means when we go to actions and close incident, it's already been pre-filled. However, if we wanted to make this very efficient, we could add in the close investigation task as the last step. To do that, back in our playbook, we'll add another task and we'll add in the close investigation built-in command. The reason we're doing this is to call out one important thing. While the fields were set as part of our data collection task, the close investigation task also sets the close notes and the close reason. So to make sure that we capture that information from the task, in this case, we're gonna pass in the existing close notes, or we could pass in our answers from the data collection task. In this case, we'll just use the close notes field as well as the close reason. Close reason, which will pass the same values back in, meaning we won't lose that data. It's a little gotcha that sometimes trips people up and something to be aware of. Any other field that you are setting as part of the task that is not included in close investigation, you should be good to go, but just something to be aware of. We can run a quick test once again using our debugger being prompted from our data collection task and selecting the close reason, the domains, and entering our close notes. We can allow it to proceed and check that our close investigation did, in take, did indeed take the answers we provided from the data collection tasks that were originally set to the fields. And with that, let's do a quick review before we wrap this video. Remember that you can utilize both context as well as XOR fields as part of your data collection tasks. These techniques can be used as part of sending a data collection task via email or other communication methods such as Slack. But you can also use data collection tasks by task only, which forces the answers to be given from within XOR as part of the incident. This can be useful to capture or prompt analysts for information from that incident, which the playbook will take further action upon. And with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.